Hi everyone, my name is John Binns from EHS Response Limited. I'm here to talk to you today about environmental management systems just to give you a beginner's guide to them, a, a brief overview if you like. With ISO 14001 and EMS standard particularly in mind. Okay, what we're going to cover then in this brief presentation is what management systems actually are. Um, we're then going to move on and think more specifically about environmental management systems, EMSs. We're going to look at certification of EMSs and then look at the different components or parts of a, an EMS. Management systems such as the ISO 14001 standard or 18001 which is, is used to manage health and safety are based on a very simple premise. It's really a way of how to manage something generally and as we can see on the, the slide here it's known as Plan Do Check Act. It was developed in the 1940s by two American researchers called Shywart and Deming. So basically the way it works then is that you, you put a plan together, you then implement that plan, you check to see if the plan has been implemented correctly and you may or may not need to make changes so you act upon that. The premise of continual improvement is very important when we are thinking about management systems. Uh, we can see the definition on the screen there but basically a continual improvement is all about recognising that there will be problems even in the best organisation but a, a good company or a good organisation learns from its mistakes and reduces the risk of similar problems from occurring in the, the future. Okay, so thinking more about environmental management systems now, we have got um, ISO 14001 and com companies will certify themselves against that standard voluntarily, so it, it's not a, a legal requirement in most cases. EMSs, such standards such as 14001, apply a general management framework really to try and um, reduce the risk of the organisation to the environment or at least control it. They're very similar to other standards that are used in business such as uh, OSAS 18001, the, the structure of them is all based on plan do check act so they are very similar and they should be kept flexible and simple so that uh, every relevant employee in the organisation can use the system. Management system standards such as ISO 14001 are quite often externally certified. The companies that carry this out are known as certification bodies. Some well known certification bodies in the UK include the British Standards Institute, BSI or Lloyd's Register of Quality Assurance LRQA but there are others as well. Certification bodies are can be accredited by an organisation known as UCAS, that's the United Kingdom Accreditation Service. So they check the, the quality of the certification body. It's not a legal requirement for certification bodies to be UCAS registered or UCAS accredited but it is recommended that organisations do use UCAS accredited certification bodies. You can also make a, a self-determination of your, your EMS. So this is where you audit the system and you give yourself perhaps a certificate. But it's very rare, most organisations don't go down that route. Time frame to implement one of these EMSs to say ISO 14001. It varies on the resources that you can put into the project. But it can be, in most cases, up to around a year, uh, possibly longer.
The next thing we're just going to consider for a, a minute or two is the component parts of a, an EMS, um, particularly looking at the ISO 14001 model. Organisations, when they are developing an EMS, will start off by doing what's known as an environmental review, although that's not mandatory, um, to gain certification to 14001. An environmental review, sometimes called a baseline review, so you're looking at what's in place at the moment and what's missing with regards to the standard. Um, you can then go on to the next phase, which is environmental policy. A policy is quite a simple document, really, it's usually just one sheet. Um, it outlines the aims of the organisation with regards to the environment. The next phase we've got is planning. Planning consists of identifying the significant risks that the organisation has on the environment. It also includes objectives and targets, so these are set to try and improve, it's part of the continual improvement process. You also have to identify your legal requirements. The next phase we've got then is called implementation and operation. This covers quite a number of different areas, but it includes things like having responsibilities for the environment or environmental management within an organisation and defining these. It also includes things like having procedures and a, a manual that describes the system overall. You also need to control operations that have a significant impact on the environment. It's known as operational control. You also need to plan for emergencies and mitigate their consequences if they, they do occur. The next phase we've got then is check-in. Check-in is all about determining whether the plan has been implemented properly. So we're looking at doing things like internal auditing, uh, monitoring and measurement and so on. We have then got a process known as management review, as its name suggests. It's a check by management on, on the system. It's something that doesn't happen very often in a lot of organisations. It can be once a year. It usually, but doesn't have to, take the form of a meeting of top management with the environmental manager giving a presentation about the EMS, such as how the organisation is doing with reaching its objectives, targets and the results of audits. So any improvements that might be required can feed back into the policy and planning and so on. So you've got the premise of continual improvement. Okay, so just to summarise then, EMS is a voluntary. The process of continual improvement is key. You've got to prove that. Um, they provide a framework for managing environmental impacts of an organisation. Component parts we discussed, as you might remember, were policy, planning, implementation and operation, check-in and management review. Okay, that's uh, it for the, this short presentation. If you want to find out a bit more about EMSs, then don't hesitate to visit our blog. Um, the address is on each of the slides, as you probably noticed. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that's been of help to you.